Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Toss salads and scrambled eggs Oh, doesn't that scene just make you want pizza? Hey guys, I am back and I am here to show you how to make New York style pizza at home using little more than just a food processor. We're going to start off with 16 and one half ounces of bread flour to which we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar and a half teaspoon of instant yeast. We're just going to pulse those to combine real quick before grabbing our artisanal milk jug filled with ice water which we're going to measure one and one third cups of that we're going to slowly drizzle into the machine as it runs. Once it starts coming together and no dry clumps remain we're going to give it a break for 10 minutes before adding two teaspoons of kosher salt and one tablespoon of vegetable oil. And now it's time to knead our dough. Let this guy go for 60 seconds. Next up, we're going to lightly oil our countertop because this dough is really, really, really sticky and we need to knead it by hand a little bit. We're not going to be able to do it without some oil. So we just want to knead the dough for a minute or two. We want it to really come together and become silky and smooth and pleasurable to the touch. And we want to roll it up into a ball Lightly oil a bowl, make sure it's good and greased, and drop our dough inside. Then we're going to wrap the whole thing tightly in plastic wrap, because this guy is headed for the fridge for 24 hours for a slow, cold rise. 24 hours later, and you can tell because I'm wearing a different shirt, we're going to turn out the dough, split it in half, roll each half into a nice little ball, place on an oiled cookie sheet, and cover loosely with plastic wrap so we can get started making our sauce. Into a food processor, we're going to dump a 28-ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes with half of its liquid, a teaspoon of kosher salt and dried oregano, and two crushed cloves of garlic before using our food processor to process our food. Now I like to let the sauce simmer for about 30 minutes to let those flavors get to know each other, so while that goes, we're going to get our oven ready. Start by placing your favorite pizza stone on the top rack of your oven and your favorite pizza steel on the bottom rack of your oven. Make sure that the racks are right on top of each other so we create a little oven within an oven as I demonstrate here with my hand. Preheat at 550 for 40 minutes. Now onto a very well floured surface we're going to turn out our dough which we've let rest at least an hour. Now at this point it's still very sticky but just keep flouring it and slowly patting it out forming it into a pizza pie. Make sure you leave about a one inch crust on the outside once you feel like you've got a good crust pick it up and use your knuckles while rotating the dough to stretch it out slowly ever larger into about a 14 inch round. Now it's time to cheese and sauce this guy, so we need to reach for our trusty pizza peel, which we're going to liberally dust with semolina flour. Then we're going to place our dough on top, make some final adjustments, and hit it with the sauce. Use a ladle so you feel like a real pizza guy. And then top it with about a quarter pound shredded, full fat, low moisture mozzarella cheese. Into the oven it goes, give it a good little shake, close it up, and about 12 minutes later you'll be greeted with this. Slice it up into six pieces, or four or eight, I don't really care. And then ideally you want to wait about five minutes to let the pizza cool down, but if you're like me and you don't give a shit about the roof of your mouth, then dig right in. And remember, it's not secretive to use pizza if you don't get a good cheese stretch. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.